Council urges effort to woo foreign retirees. Japanese customer accuses Thai masseur of attempted rape. Phuket's diarrhea outbreak wanes. And tourism numbers in Chiang Mai solid and on the rise. Well, hello there and welcome back to the Thai Expat Daily Show. I'm your host, Kira Mack, as always, and delighted you've been able to tune in with us yet again for another show. Now, before we do get into the top four stories doing the rounds here in Thailand, don't forget to like and subscribe to this video and channel if you are watching us on YouTube. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so that YouTube will let you know when the next available show is uploaded. Now, if you like listening on a podcast player, there's a link down below in the description where all the available podcast players can be found. And finally, if you like the show, if you want to support the show, if you get value from the show, you can buy us a coffee through the link down below in the description. And now that that's all done and dusted, let's jump into those top four trending stories of the day. Council urges effort to woo foreign retirees. The Tourism Council of Thailand, that's the TCT, has urged the new government to establish the country as a destination for retirees while calling for the removal of regulatory barriers pertaining to supply development. The TCT and representatives from the Thai Sang Thai Party met on Wednesday to exchange their views on tourism development after the party held discussions with tour- tourism associations in Phuket, Panya and Krabi on Tuesday. Chamnan Shiswat, president of the TCT, said tourism development should be upgraded to a national agenda item with a committee chaired by the Prime Minister to engage all related ministries. He said most of the regulations that require amendments fall under the responsibility of ministries other than the Tourism and Sports Ministry, such as hotel registration, which falls under the Interior Ministry, and natural resources at tourism destinations, which fall under the Natural Resources and Environment Ministry. Mr. Cham Nam said that the private sector agrees with the coalition's government's vow to reform outdated laws and regulations, especially in terms of cutting redundant rules that hinder tourism development. In terms of tourism promotion, TCT suggests reaping the benefits of being an increasingly aging society by promoting Thailand as a preferred destination for retirees by offering health and wellness products which could attract high spending visitors. Former Federation of Thai Industries Chairman Supanat, who is the economic chief of the Thai Sang Thai Party, said that the delay in forming a new government is taking a toll on economic confidence and foreign investment. As MP-elect await endorsement from the election commission, the coalition government is attempting to pave the way for future work by listening to the opinions of stakeholders in various industries. Now, in addition to the plan to promote the country to foreign retirees, Mr. Supan said the creation of a central booking platform combining tourism products such as hotels, restaurants and attractions is another solution aimed at increasing the benefits for local operators and avoiding the loss of a significant amount of revenue to foreign platforms. Meanwhile, Kunying Sudarat, leader of the Thai Sang Thai Party and a party list MP elect, said after holding talks with the private sector in three southern provinces along the Andaman coast that they had reached an agreement to take part in two working teams that the coalition would set up later to drive two policies. The first mission is to establish a special Andaman tourist economic zone to accelerate infrastructure and tourism development with the aim of boosting tourism revenue to 1 trillion baht from the three provinces or almost double the current level of income. She said that the board of the committee for the economic zone would include public, private and community representatives to be solely responsible for economic development and investment while other administrative matters would remain under the responsibility of the provincial government. Now, the second policy is to suspend around 1,400 laws and regulations that are proving to be impediments to business at present. Mrs. Sudarat said the eight parties in the coalition government agreed that this agenda would be pursued as soon as the government is able to begin its work. So more great ideas for tourism and the idea of kind of trying to attract retirees to the country. Now, for the government and for people kind of in power, if you want to actually attract retirees to this country, I would suggest you look at the rules and regulations and the visa requirements for retirees to come here, because I think that is the biggest issue that retirees have in terms of coming to Thailand. At present, you can get a a uh, nano, I think, retirement visa from your local embassy. You have to get that, and it's good, I think, for 90 days. And then after that, you have to ex- you go to the immigration office to get an extension. Now, normally that extension, you need to bring along about two inches of paperwork with you to get that extension. 
they want all kinds of stuff from you that really is not necessary and i think they if they could simplify the process for applying for a one-year extension of stay or maybe not even giving one year maybe giving two or three years on your retirement visa so that people don't have to keep going to the immigration office to do these things give them a, a longer visa and make things simpler for them you know at present you have to have eight hundred thousand baht in the bank for two or three months beforehand and then for two months after and then you have to keep 400,000 in the bank for the remainder of your visa which I think is wrong you have 400,000 baht being tied up in a bank account for no reason and then people might say well it's in case something happens to you and you know you need medical expenses but they also make you get insurance health insurance so that's the other issue as well so you have health insurance I think people should be allowed to prove that a they're you know not gangsters as such b that they have sufficient funds to support their time here in the country and if they can do both those things and have their insurance then why not give them you know a a two or three year visa for their time being here and make things easy for them but this idea that every year you have to go through the same rigmarole in the country with no real security or safety as in you're trying to retire in the country you want to spend the rest of your days here and enjoy your life but it's really not like that for you because you're going to be constantly going to immigration renewing this visa over and over again and there's no real security in that and then of course you're always at the behest of whatever immigration officer you meet when you go in to the office he might make up a new rule today and you can rarely ever get past it because These guys do whatever they want. So I do think there needs to be a streamlining of the process and making things easier if you want to attract more retirees to Thailand. And I think if you do that, I think people will come because I think Thailand is a a great country to live in. It's relatively safe safe in terms of crime. The roads are a whole other different thing. You know, food costs of living in general is a lot cheaper than maybe your home country in Europe or America or Australia or wherever you're coming from. So I, I do think it has many positive things going for it but it does need to do something about the visa application and giving people as i said security in their daily lives and their visa process but i'd love to know guys what you think about this maybe as expats here in the country or people considering coming here to thailand does it appeal to you does it not appeal to you i'd love to know your comments as always down below in the comment section now the second story of the day japanese customer accuses time sewer of attempted rape in bangkok a japanese woman took to Twitter to share a story of a Thai masseur attempted to rape her while providing a service as a massage parlor near Khao San Road in Bangkok. The female shop owner defended her male employee, telling police that inserting a finger into a woman's vagina is part of the service. A a Thai Twitter user translated Japanese victim's post and shared it on Twitter yesterday, June 12th. The 23-year-old Japanese woman revealed that she visited the massage shop, later identified as Tong U Massage Shop uh, near Khao San Road, with her Chinese boyfriend in February. So this was quite a few months ago, but it's only coming to light now. At the shop, the couple were offered separate services, a Thai masseur, a allegedly named Mai Nikritai, was assigned to provide a service to her. Suddenly, while performing a massage, the man sexually assaulted her by putting his finger into her vagina. She was shocked and screamed for help. She then contacted officers from the Chan Song Kram police station. After two hours passed, no officers arrived at the scene. So she managed to drag the masseur to Chana Songkham police station, which is only 500 meters away from the incident scene. Now, according to the victim, the police did not question the masseur in her presence. They talked privately in another room. The man returned and shouted at the alleged victim, saying that it was her fault. Shockingly, the shop owner defended the masseur's actions, stating that putting a finger into her private area was part of the massage process. Jesus. The shop owner even dared the victim to demonstrate how the man sexually assaulted her to convince her and the police that the service was normal. The Japanese woman did not give up and reported the assault to the Thai embassy. Police officers urged her to visit the police station again the next day. However, the police station was closed when she arrived, the woman said. It's absolutely unbelievable. What is the police station open Monday to Friday, 8 to 5 each day? The idea that you report a crime to the police only works in Japan, not Thailand. Even if you're raped or killed, you have to take care of yourself. Be careful, everyone. Now, this is a bit of a story and it's a strange one, but there is an official police report. So it is, uh, has, and she, what she's saying as from her side is true. Now, this just shows you the need for Thailand to start to get up at the times. Now, if a woman goes into a police station to say that she was raped or sexually assaulted, that should be taken seriously. And not having her in the, the same area as the guy who assaulted her, shouting at her, the owner shouting at her, this kind of stuff is unbelievable. It's just so unprofessional. And then the idea that she is told to come back a second time to make a report and they're not even open why is the police station not open 
I thought police stations were meant to be open 24 hours. Something funny about this story as well. But nevertheless, a very, very strange story and very unfortunate for the Japanese lady who, of course, you know, has gone back home to Japan and I'm sure she's told her friend, it's been on Twitter, and of course, does damage to the country because the police look like idiots yet again. And of course, we all know it's the usual thing here. Maybe the, the owner of the massage shop knew some of the police and that's why they didn't prosecute. So nothing seems to have done as of yet. I hope something does get done, but at least the name of the massage shop is out there and hopefully people will avoid it like the plague. Now moving along. Phuket's diarrhea outbreak wanes. Causes are still unknown. So a diarrhea outbreak in the southern resort island of Phuket province is subsiding, while health officials have not yet determined its cause. Dr. Kittisak Aksor Wong, inspector of the 11th Health Region, which covers Phuket, said on Thursday that the number of diarrhea patients in Phuket began to rise on June 6th with 383 cases and the cases peaked at 1,238 on June 9. Now starting from June 10th, the number of patients started to decline with 808 followed by 615 on June 12th and 376 cases on June 13th. There's a few more numbers there, but I'm not going to overburden you with the numbers from this article because I don't think they're correct. Most patients exhibited mild symptoms and only 13% of all patients were admitted to hospitals. About 75% of the patients had norovirus, whilst the rest showed no signs of suspicious diseases, Dr. Kittisak said. Despite the improving situation, disease investigations and surveillance are going on, he said. Phuket Health Chief Dr. Kusak Kukikul said health officials had examined samples from six ice factories and three majoring drinking water plants in Phuket, but they did not find any signs of suspicious disease. Now, I'm also going to come back to that part in a second. Dr. Kusak's office warned local administrative organisers and schools to maintain cleanliness of their food and food containers. So, firstly, the figure that I have seen was 6,000 patients, people in Phuket, had contracted norovirus, which is basically the symptoms are fever and diarrhoea, amongst other things, but they're the main things. It's been about that figure for the last week or so. And then this bit about the uh, six factories and the three majoring drinking water plants in Phuket, they say they did not find any suspicious diseases. Now, what's really peculiar about that statement is in the Phuket News this morning, there was an entire article about how they did find ice that was contaminated. And they did find drinking water that was contaminated with norovirus. But since then, that article has now been deleted by the Phuket News. So I'm not quite sure if they were warned and told to delete this article, whether it was true or not, or they misreported. This part in this article seems to have been slightly changed from what I read this morning. And normally when I read articles, I always uh, bookmark them so I can go back to them for the story to bring to you guys today. But when I went back to this one, the story had vanished off the internet, which I find very, very suspicious because the Phuket news are not, are very rarely wrong in their reporting. So I think there's something suspicious. I wonder, did they get a phone call telling them, don't mention anything. But anyway, the figures that I saw, by the way, was 6,000 people had been infected with norovirus in Phuket. Because I know the Tiger a few days ago did a very, very big story on it. There was a lot of people, not a couple of hundred. A couple of hundred's nothing. You know, 6,000 is something serious. So I think they're trying to downplay it a little bit because they don't want to, you know, scare off the remaining tourists. But nevertheless, it is going on. There is something going around Phuket that people are getting. A norovirus, from what I can tell, is highly contagious. So if you're in Phuket, be careful, as they say. And uh, if you start feeling sick or whatever, rest. Go to a hospital if you need to, uh, you know, and keep yourself hydrated. And finally, tourism numbers in Chiang Mai, solid and on the rise. And I... I'm happy for Chiang Mai when I read this story and went through it. Chiang Mai's tourism industry is continuing to recover with the average occupation rate of hotels in the province reaching 75% in the first five months of this year. Pasan Sukcharan, president of the Thai Hotels Association, that's the upper northern chapter, said. Speaking at the general meeting of the association members on Thursday, Paisan said that hotels in the northern province recorded a 70% occupation rate from January to March, with the number plummeted to less than 30% in April, as Chiang Mai, like other northern provinces, battled smog and high PM 2.5 levels. As the air pollution improved, Thai and foreign tourists started coming back to Chiang Mai in May, he said, adding that the trend also prompted operators of unregistered small hotels to increase their rooms to eight or more to meet the legal requirement to register as a small hotel and attract more customers. 
Paisan added that currently there are about 600 registered hotels in the province, with about 2,000 more who are not yet to be registered. Paisan said the association will work with the tourist attractions in providing training for hotel staff, especially in language and technology skills, to prepare for the increasing number of tours it expects to see in the second half of this year. Now, Salida Sularatavan, director of the Tourism Authority of Thailand's Chiang Mai office, said that in the first five months of this year, Chiang Mai recorded over 4.7 million visitors, of whom 3.08 million were Thais and the rest foreigners. She added that tourists visiting the northern city usually spend two to three days at local hotels, which have a total combined room capacity of over 34,000. Total spending in the five months reached 46.7 billion baht, mostly on accommodation, food and entertainment. The TAD estimated Chiang Mai will secure at least 80 billion baht of tourism revenue this year, approaching the pre-COVID level of 100 billion baht recorded back in 2019. But it's good to see Chiang Mai is starting to get back on the map again for tourism. I do hope, and I have read, that this government, hopefully, if they get in, of course, and they're elected, they are planning to tackle this PM 2.5 issue that they've had here in Chiang Mai and I think it really as you see from the articles 30% occupancy in April now April is Songkran which is probably the busiest time of the year in most other places but because of PM 2.5 people were avoiding it which is sad to see but nevertheless it's improving things are getting better for Chiang Mai people and it's a place I love to go visit folks and I urge anybody who's coming to Thailand whatever go to Chiang Mai it's a wonderful city anyway that's it for today folks thanks again for tuning in hope you enjoyed the show and we'll see you again in the next couple of days have a great day and take care but ultimately with this story or anything else that stood out to you today i'd love to know your thoughts in the comments down below because yes this is a new show but it's also a conversation now keep that conversation going make sure you like this video subscribe to the channel share the video and do all the good stuff that does help that youtube algorithm but ultimately my name is kira mack you've been listening to the thai expat daily show and we will see you next time